The Memorial Day holiday weekend is coming up, and it's a time a lot of us go to family events and are asked to bring a dish. I also realized recently that I've never made a potato salad video. So here it is now. I found a great recipe for a red-skinned potato salad on allrecipes.com, uploaded by someone named Donna. It's got over a thousand reviews, a few simple ingredients, and very positive reviews. So let's make some red-skinned potato salad. All right, here is where I'm deviating from the recipe slightly. The recipe says to get a large pot of water, salt it and bring it to a boil, then add the potatoes. But anytime I've ever worked with potatoes, the recipe says put them in cool water and bring them to a boil. So I'm gonna do it that way. Put your potatoes in cool water, generously salt the water, and then bring it to a boil over high heat. Also, in a small saucepan, bring six eggs in cold water to a boil. And unlike the potatoes, which we're going to cook for about 15 minutes, as soon as this water reaches a boil, we're immediately removing the eggs from heat. Also for this recipe, we need to finely chop one onion. I always like to cut it in half, work on each of the halves individually. Okay, so that's pretty much one half of the onion finely chopped. Continue that with the other half. Now that your potatoes have reached a boil, cook them for 15 minutes. This will make them tender, but not so soft that they become mashed potatoes. At this point, our eggs have reached a decent boil. So remove from heat, let them cool for 12 to 15 minutes. We also need to cook up one pound of bacon in a large skillet. So put the skillet over medium-high heat, spray it lightly. From this point on, the bacon fat will help it cook, will help it fry. And I would get a plate ready off to the side that has some paper towels on it. So once you believe your skillet has reached medium-high heat, place a few strips of your bacon into it. And you'll hear them frying. And they'll fry up pretty quick. When you think they've cooked long enough on one side, you can flip them. Be careful not to splash your grease everywhere. Yeah, I should have gone a little longer on the first side, but it's alright. They'll cook quick. Okay. Take your pieces and quickly set them on your paper towel lined plate. Make sure you drip off some of the oil if you'd like. And I could have gone darker than this with the bacon too. It's your recipe, so really it's your preference um, for how dark you want your bacon. My potatoes have boiled for a little over 15 minutes. Now drain them carefully. And then we're going to put these in the fridge in a minute to cool. Now that the potatoes have drained well enough, put them in your fridge to cool. Shouldn't take more than 10 minutes. You also need one stalk of celery, finely chopped. My stalks are a little smaller, so I'm going to use, you know, two of them. Just work your way down. Cut them very thin. You can go a little thinner than this too if you'd like. Our eggs have sat in the water that was close to a boil for a little over 12 minutes now. So very gently pour them out. And run some cool water over them as well. So if you've ever made hard boiled eggs, we're doing the same process here. You know, hit your egg and then just slowly crack off the shell. It should come away decently. Um, you got to be gentle with it. It's a bit tedious of a process. Okay, yeah, see I tore that up. Be a little gentler, but even, even still that's most of an egg. That's most of an egg, so do that with all six eggs. As I discovered, because it's been a while since I've peeled boiled eggs, I have very little patience for it. So again, no judgment if yours look like this. I wouldn't judge you anyway. I'd be happy you're making this. 
And your family's not even going to notice. Your friends, they're not going to notice because you we're chopping them up. So just lightly chop them. Um, you can go as small or as big as you want. Now let's put our eggs, our chopped eggs, our celery, one stalk finely chopped, and then our finely chopped onion into the bowl. Also, if your pound of cooked bacon is cool enough, you can crumble it into your mixture. And you can crumble it based on whatever your size preferences are. Or, you know, if you're cooking for certain people and they have a size preference. Okay, my potatoes have definitely cooled a good amount. They're still a little warm, but that's okay. Especially because we're going to refrigerate the entire mixture for a little while. So just cut your potatoes gently. Um, all right, now we need two cups of mayonnaise. And because I live in the South now, I'm using the brand Duke's, which I've never tasted before. You know, people down here are crazy about Duke's. They love Duke's. You know, they'll say, oh, Ohio doesn't have Duke's. How do people in Ohio survive? So, I don't know, I just grew up on Hellman's, which I thought was fine, but let's see how this Duke's tastes. Two cups of mayonnaise. All right, so that was one cup. Here's our second cup of mayonnaise. At this point, add a little bit of salt and a little bit of pepper, however much you prefer. Then we're going to stir it all together. So really make sure it all mixes. And you're going to need a really large bowl for this. I've mixed it together well enough. So now get some plastic wrap and make sure you cover it. And let it cool in your fridge for at least an hour. Then we can try some. Get a small manageable bite that has a few different things on it that you're looking for. Whoa! Mmm! Oh man! I was expecting this to be good, but wow! As funny as it is to say, I just got blown away by potato salad. The potatoes are the perfect amount of tenderness. Adding bacon is amazing. The celery's good, the onion's good. Duke's mayonnaise is delicious. The eggs are great. This is by far the best potato salad I've ever had. I think your friends and family will love it. So please, if you like this video, subscribe, follow along, you can do it, it's super easy.